Good afternoon, everyone. Jill here with North Texas Vegetable Gardening, canning recipes, a little bit of everything. Wanted to give you guys a fall garden update. Show you what's going on in here in the high tunnel, what we got planted, how our seeds are doing, so you can get a good idea of what's going on here on the farm. Let's get started. So first off, guys, we brought in the tubs that uh, all those sweet potatoes were grown in, and uh, I put some uh, compost organic matter in here to rejuvenate the soil a bit. That's another good thing about gardening in tubs. Um, you don't lose your soil, and you can uh, keep modifying and adding to it when you get ready to replant. And so that's what I'm going to be doing today. So I've added compost matter in there, and you want to get in, guys, and mix it up really good with your hands because that compost can be hot meaning it'll burn up your your new plants and your new seeds if you don't get it mixed in really good so that's what i've been doing this morning so if you think something's missing it is the cucumbers had to go guys we got uh, overtaken by the aphids we kept using the insecticidal soap uh, the neem oil to try to keep them at bay and it, it, it just didn't work so uh my husband, Greg, ordered uh, the Azotin O, which is replacing the Azotin XL. It is uh, for organic gardening, and uh, so we're excited for that to come in. Thank you, Oki Rob. He's the one that suggested that for us for our greenhouse gardening. So we can't wait for that to, to come in so we can try to get some better control. But we did have to go ahead and pull these cucumbers so that we can protect my seedlings that I'm putting in here and our tomato vines that are going on. Let's check those out. So I'm excited to report, guys, look, they are doing quite well. Hoping that we'll get uh, some tomatoes before the fall arrives or for our first freeze, actually. Checking to make sure. Now, if you're seeing the white stuff on here, that's diatomaceous earth that Greg sprayed on them to try to protect them. And uh, yeah, the leaves are looking Looking pretty good, but uh, check out these vines. So we have been getting into the lower 60s at night, so I'm expecting to start seeing some of these uh, flowers have some uh, fruit set on them. So they're looking really good, but my showstopper is this squash, guys, that keeps on going. Whew. What is this? Look at there. Aphids. So guess what? This may be coming up all over my flowers. But to go back to the squash, I just want to show you that it has produced all year since I planted it and it's continuing to produce. Look down there. And look there. We are getting two or three pieces of yellow squash on a regular basis. Let's look. The back of these leaves. Yeah, there's aphids. So, uh, see there, guys? Been treating them, even with the diatomaceous earth, and there they are. So, these are going to come up, too. But anyway, just wanted to show you that uh, they were still producing and doing pretty well, but uh, we just can't take that risk. So, here are my seed starters. These are broccoli and cabbage. They are doing quite well in here. We have uh, this handy-dandy little sticker these are used in crops and when you look at this you can pretty much see what's going on with your plants so far we're okay and i'm coming in here and spraying these regular um guys i can't emphasize that that azotin o has to get here as soon as possible so we can get this stuff under control but uh, otherwise they're looking pretty good i planted these about a week ago so here are the tomatoes that we put in the ground we have a head start from last year Last year, I hadn't even put my little uh, starters in the ground yet. So you can see these have been in the ground for a while. And uh, they're also starting to produce flowers. Again, I'm expecting with these cooler temperatures that we're getting at night to see some of this fruit set. And even if we get green tomatoes, there's many things we can do with those. And we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Looking good. And over here are my onions. So the bigger ones are the ones that I started in a seed tray and transplanted, and the little ones are the ones I scattered in here. So this is a great idea to use a kid's pool to start your onions in if you're gonna be planting 
a lot. Um, this will give us some really good sized bulbs to put in the ground when that other high tunnel's ready. So we have more cabbage and more broccoli in here. This is uh, some of my Vulcan Swiss chard. And this is my uh, uh, blue kale. So this has been kind of slow to start, but um, I think it's finally kicking in. And then I have these empty tubs here to use for more seedlings that I have ready to go. So that Hurricane Nicholas has given us some really good cloud cover and we're really enjoying it. Giving us a break from the heat. Greg is out there working on that uh, other high tunnel. He has, uh, it's been kind of a slow process because of the heat guys and having to uh, get this high tunnel cleaned up and having to treat uh, the insects and stay on top of that. So uh, he's back on that. He's just about got um, all the purlins up and then he'll be ready to build the end walls and put up uh, the side boards. He's already put the bottom baseboards on, but uh, he can, he'll be able to put the side boards on uh, where the wiggle wire goes to hold down the plastic. But this is filling up quickly. Uh, you may recall about a month ago it was empty and now it's starting to fill up. So I'll be planting in that raised bed over there. We're gonna let it sit a little bit treat it uh, for aphids because they are in the soil, guys. Uh, we did look under the microscope and they were there. And then we have these to plant in. So I think uh, probably in about another month, this will start to look really green and start to, to look uh, filled up. Very excited about that. So let's go check out my seed starters. That look at my bok choy. Guys, it looks like I got 100% germination out of this. Um, I did go ahead and thin them out. Here's some of my little thins a couple of days ago to give them room to grow. These are not ready to go in the ground yet or even into uh, the little four inch pots. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put them directly in the ground or if I'm gonna put them in the four inch pot, so stay tuned. Here is more of my Vulcan Swiss chard. My spinach is starting to come up. This is more of the golden acre cabbage, which is supposed to be a quick turnaround. My kohlrabi, and it's starting to come up a little bit. This was kind of a slow germinator. And then here are my celery plants. Um, these have been up here for a while, but it takes celery um, quite a bit of time to get established and to get uh, healthy enough to transplant. Earlier in the week, I started some more Calabrese broccoli. It's doing pretty good. And over here is more of the kale. So uh, this is the magic I think the magic mountain kale and then these in my four inch pots so some of these might go into some of those tubs in that high tunnel i'm debating because i really don't want anything to get them that's in there so i may wait for that azotin o uh, to come in and for us to be able to treat them tower of power is looking fabulous look at this toothache plant guys i've already taken some of the little flowers and put them in uh, envelopes to plant next year but let's go around it and let me show you what's going on so this is the plant i took my calendula off of and you see i got more buds this is a uh, um, um, chamomile and look at that rosemary man it has just exploded in here and so has the tarragon uh, tarragon is looking great and uh, this is more of that holy basil i want this to grow 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 because i want to dry more for tea it turned out really, really well. Uh, eucalyptus. This is the Maline, And you know, I cut some of that off and made a, a tincture uh, last weekend. Sage is coming in just in time for the holidays. And we have some fennel. And my transplants in this raised bed is doing really well. They are doing well. So uh, looking good. That's also broccoli and cabbage in there. Maybe some cauliflower too. Not quite ready to plant this one yet. When some of that spinach comes to fruition, guys, up there where I can start getting it uh, in the ground, I think I'm probably gonna put some of that in here. My spinach always does well in this spot, but it's still too hot right now um, for me to feel comfortable putting anything out here. So we haven't discussed my ginger in a while. It's, uh, it's doing really well, guys. I pulled one up, one of the rhizomes up, and uh, it looks really good, and, and I've got it curing. It needs to go ahead and get its uh, hard skin. But uh, yeah, I'm very pleased with the ginger. You can never have too much ginger. 
So Greg tilled up two spots here in front of the high tunnel, the first high tunnel, that we'll plant next year. We're not gonna put anything in the ground in it uh, this fall, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover it with weed cloth uh, to kill all the weeds, and then this will be another outdoor area of planting for us. So if we could just get some cooler weather, it would be much nicer, but we are happy with what's going on in here and we're happy uh, with what we've got planted and other things that we're gonna be planting in here real soon. And then that other high tunnel. So uh, be sure and hit that subscribe button. Uh, tell your friends about us. Hit that like button if you like this video. We'll continue to do our garden updates so you can see how we're prospering and uh, what's going on and what we're battling and what seems to be doing well. So thank you, all of you, for watching and supporting us. Take care, God bless, and we'll be in touch.